Rules of the Ride by Adam McClellan, illustrated by Gail Piazza. Page 2. It was a cloudy Saturday morning. At the school playground, more than 200 children waited impatiently beside their bikes. The Parkside Elementary School fundraising ride was supposed to begin 10 minutes ago. Now the possibility of rain threatened to cancel the ride. Page 3. The big green and yellow banner that marked the ride's starting point flapped steadily in the wind. Parents and teachers stood in small groups discussing the weather. Page 4. Jamal and his friend Terence rode around the school playground, looking for a good position in the lineup of bikes. They were in the same class, but people saw them together so often that they were sometimes thought to be brothers. In one corner of the playground, Jamal could see the fenced-off place where a new playground structure would be built if enough money were raised. The students in Mr. Andrews' fifth grade class had come up with the idea of a five-mile bike ride to raise the money. The whole school had liked the idea. Riders had asked people to pledge money to support their ride. Many of Jamal's relatives and neighbors pledged, and Jamal would raise $15 for every mile of the race he finished. Page 5. Jamal and Terence found a spot toward the back of the group, and Terence rested on his old blue bicycle. It had a rusty chain, and paint was chipping off. The bike used to belong to his older brother, who had often left it out in the rain. Jamal's bike, on the other hand, was a brand new red mountain bike. Jamal looked at Terence's bike. T, you've got to start looking after the mean blue machine. Think it'll make it five miles? Of course it will, Terence replied. If I were you, I'd worry about that shiny red bike of yours. It'll probably break down the first time you go over a bump. Jamal laughed confidently. He knew his bike would be able to handle anything. Page 6 At last, the school principal hollered, Let's ride! Eagerly, the riders began to move forward. Terence started pedaling, his bike chain creaking as he shifted gears. Jamal rode next to Terence. Terence concentrated on steadily pumping his legs. Soon he was ahead. Jamal shouted, Wait for me, T! Terence stopped pedaling for a few moments and let Jamal catch up. After two miles, the riders started to thin out, and Jamal and Terence were in the middle of the pack. The more experienced riders were far ahead. Page 7. In the third mile, the route went up a hill. Terence started to move ahead, shouting back, Keep up if you can, Jamal. Otherwise, I'll see you at the finish line. Jamal watched Terence shift gears and pull ahead until he was out of sight. Page 8. Pedaling as hard as he could, Jamal slowly climbed to the top of the hill. Then, effortlessly, he coasted down the hill, passing several riders. As the route leveled off, the wind began to pick up and the air grew colder. The clouds darkened overhead. I don't want to get stuck in the rain, thought Jamal, pedaling even harder. By the time Jamal reached the mile four marker, the first light drops of rain dotted his arms. Then the sky grew black and the rain began to pour. Soon, Jamal was soaking wet. Suddenly, Jamal noticed a boy crouched beside a bicycle at the end of the road. Slowing down, he saw that it was Terence. Page 10 Terence's left knee was scraped, and a trickle of blood ran down his leg. His eyes were red from tears. There was no chain on his bike. Terence looked up. Hey, Jamal! he said unhappily. Hey, T, Jamal replied. What happened? I was cruising along when suddenly my chain snapped, Terence answered. Then I lost my balance and crashed. I landed right on my knee. Your knee looks bad, said Jamal. Not as bad as my bike. Now I can't finish the race, responded Terence. Yeah, that's too bad, Jamal said sympathetically. If you can't ride your bike, 
you can't complete the race. Is that right? What do the rules say exactly? Jamal wondered. Hold on, let me check something, Jamal said. He pulled the ride, the ride sheet out of his back pocket. The rules were listed on the back of the rain-splattered paper. Page 12. Hey, listen to this, Jamal went on. It says participants may collect pledge money for every mile of the ride route they complete. You know what? Jamal concluded. You can still finish. Not with a broken bike, Terence snorted. No, of course not. But the rules just say you collect money for each mile completed, Jamal explained. They don't say you have to be on a bike. So quit complaining. Let's go. Can you walk okay with that knee? Terence thought for a few seconds. I think so, he said. He picked up his bike and started rolling it along the route. Limping beside it at first, Jamal walked beside him with his own bike. Page 14. There was one mile to go. It began to rain harder, so the boys started running with their bikes, splashing through streams of rainwater. Finally, the route turned in onto a wide street. Far ahead, they could see the finish line, where a small crowd of spectators was applauding the riders as they came in. Jamal could see the spectators' reactions as he came closer. First, they were surprised that the boys were running instead of riding their bikes. But when the spectators saw Terence's broken bike and cut knee, they understood what had happened. As Terence and Jamal crossed the finish line, the enthusiastic crowd applauded as if the boys had finished first in a race. Page 16. The two wet boys trudged over to the sign-out tent, breathing hard. With satisfaction, Jamal and Terence wrote down the full amounts they had raised for the playground structure. You know, Terence said, turning to Jamal, it's a good thing you read the rules. Jamal nodded. Then he grinned, looking down at Terence's broken bike. And it would be a good thing for you to start taking care of your bike, he said. The end.